Hey guys, Kerstin here with my last travelog and my final vi and my final video here in Japan. So today I am in Odaiba, which is a, a man-made island in the Tokyo Bay that was originally designed as a military fortress to fend off naval attacks, but has since become a big center of shopping, dining, and entertainment. So to start off, the building I'm looking at right now is the Fuji TV headquarters. This is a TV station, obviously that is well known for uh, well broadcasting uh, several uh, well known anime like Dragon Ball Z, One Piece, Digimon, Yu-Gi-Oh and Beyblade. And it's also known for its unique structure as you can see with all the crossbars and the big the big sphere up at the top. So there's a lot of stuff to see in Odaiba and several streets they'll need crossing to get to those places. So I'm going to take you around and show you some of the things that there are to see in Odaiba. To start off, we'll head this way. That music you're hearing is a street performer. We just happened to set up near the location in which I started filming it. For those of you curious, the street form would be that man over there. So we'll start down this way. And you might not hear me talking too much during the transit to these different locations because I don't exactly have my fun facts related to Odaiba. So first off, we'll cross here. You just have to wait for the, the light to change. Just giving you a little look around. And here we go. So as far as the Fuji TV building goes, a lot of the area is basically the area where they make TV shows up there is not too much of an area that you can visit. And you can actually go up to the orb, which is called the Hachitama, but you need to pay and buy a ticket to do so. So we'll just keep hang on. This isn't exactly a crowded place. Mainly because in general there's enough room, there's enough space in the walking room that you no. Know, it can kinda of hold a lot of people. There there's room for a lot of people and you're not going to really find too much in terms of you know, kind of crowds. And actually I just realized that I'm going to have to go over this bridge to show you the first thing. So we'll head over this way. And head there. I'll probably kind of put timestamps within the video description so that you can kind of skip this transit part and get to 
the parts where I show off things I want to show off. Looking at a map, I initially didn't think this place was that big. But actually being here, yeah, you can kind of see that you get from this place, there is a good deal of walking. So taking another look, one thing to notice is that these stairs have been decorated with a poster. And this is in promotion for the upcoming One Piece film, One Piece Film Z. And there are actually, at the current time, a lot of things promoting that film because, of course, like I said before, Fuji TV broadcasts One Piece. So, yeah, as you can see, there are a good amount of people here, but there's a lot of space and room for them to walk, so you won't see, you won't really feel crowded just because there's enough room that you don't have to be packed in close to other people, and you have plenty of personal space to just go around and not feel crowded. And this video w may be divided into parts because it seems like my camera might have a thing where if a video recording goes on for too long, it'll divide it up into individual parts. That's happened at least once. I don't know if that's actually a thing with the camera or if that was an accident and I had accidentally pressed stop and then started another video while recording one. It's not particularly noisy around here. Which is a nice and simple thing. So the first thing is this place here, which is, this is zooming in, the Diver City, the Diver City Tokyo Plaza. This is a seven-story shopping mall and home to what is one of the landmarks of Odaiba currently. And it's actually just around the corner. And while you can't see it now, this is one of the biggest things in Odaiba. And by big, I do mean big. So you'll notice I have my camera angled down. And that's because while I am near it, I'm going to get to a point where I can give you guys a better view before I actually show what it is. <laughs> You'll notice a lot of people getting this area because this is really something that a lot of people come here to see. So, almost there, almost there, just a little bit more. And just getting to a good vantage point. And here we go. So, here's it. 
This is a 1-1 scale model of the RX-78-2 Gundam from Mobile Suit Gundam, also known as the original Gundam. So as you see, there are the people down there, and that's the Gundam. It is 1-1 scale and is gigantic. Just zooming in, you can see that there are a lot of details put into it. And you can see that the eyes light up. It's incredibly well sculpted, incredibly well detailed. And if it were to be engineered so, it might even be rideable. Although this isn't the only place it's been. The 1-1 scale Gundam has actually moved locations one or two times. Its current location is here in Odaiba. And the reason for and the reason for it being here is something that you can see over around here. This can cruise people. And since it's Chris since it's Christmas season. We have this little Gundam display, which is Christmas themed. And you can see lots and lots of people are taking pictures of it. But it really is an amazing sight to see. So actually there are two reasons the sorts for it to be here. The first is Odaiba has the location of the Gundam Cafe, which is a Gundam themed cafe. So enough. The second reason is the Gundam Front, which is a big museum of Gundam that is on the top floor of Diversity Tokyo Plaza. Although that would take pretty long to get to, considering that here's the first floor and it's on the seventh floor. But, well, this is a pretty amazing thing, that's not the end of what there is to see. So to get to the next place, we're going to cut through with Iris City Tokyo Plaza. And that way I can give you a little bit of an idea of what it's like. So you can see Gundam Front here has this little store which sells a lot of stuff like models and whatnot. Ooh. And there's the shop right in there. So right now we'll pass through Diver City Tokyo Plaza. I apologize for the sniffling, but with the cold weather, my nose has gotten a little bit runny. So we're starting out in the food court, which actually has a lot of Japanese themed eateries, and well, because this is the mall, this place is actually a little bit crowded. But I've been in Tokyo long enough that I can get through crowds pretty easily. So we've got other stuff. We've got American Eateries, Krispy Kreme Donuts, and Auntie Anne's. Which just goes along with how Japan has a lot of American franchises. And so we've come to center. And so just to give you a look, this is 
know just how big this place is. You can see you've got all the different floors. Have the Daiba, which is a little soup, little old Daiba souvenir shop. A lot of stuff related to the TV, and of course, stuff related to One Piece. second floor right now. So to get to the next place we have to take the escalator or the stairs down to the first floor. So you also see another gathering peel out here because there's another thing to see. Which is part of the production for One Piece Film Z. Just getting a look up there, you can see a couple statues of Monkey D. Luffy, the hero of One Piece, and the villain of the new film called Z, squaring off against each other. And once again, nice and well detailed. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It, Sometimes you can't bump into people. And see they even have a lot of good facial details. So there's another display. I probably won't be able to get to all of the displays for one piece within Odriba. But I guess I'll be able to show a few of them. So the next thing is over this way. And just for one thing, over there is the Ferris wheel, which is a real, which is called the Daikan Rancha, and it's one of the biggest Ferris wheels in Japan. And as you can see, it's got a variety of different colored cars to it, and a lot of them. And it's also one of the big icons of Odaiba. So, also this is actually a pretty big residential area, and an area a lot of people pass through. So compared to a lot of Japan, this place has a good amount of traffic. Also that, which is the, which that thing over there is the Tokyo Teleport Bridge, which goes to the Tokyo Teleport Station, which is a rail line, specifically made to run to Odaiba.
Also, getting closer. And yeah, I'm just gonna apologize right now for just how long this video is going to be. And it's really just because of travel time. So over here we have a couple more of the shopping complexes, which are Dex and Mediad, which is also part, which is also connected to another one called Aqua City. And see, you got signs for both Mediad and Aqua City right there. I don't know who those people were, but they probably just singled me out because I'm a foreigner. So to get to there, we need to go through Miyad, which has a little movie theater in it, so if you want to even come and see a movie, you need to exit out this way. So near where I want to show you is our, well, these two crying bears. So basically here is the whole, like, these are these sore bears. And then you see, they're kind of here as a way to kind of will kind of spread the message about the deforestation of the rainforests. Which is why they're crying and stuff. I don't exactly know the origin, but I believe these have been here for quite a while. But anyway, going over to Dex, Tokyo. There are a couple of things to note here. First, is that there is a sort of Japanese Legoland here. The Legoland Discovery Center, which is inside Dex Tokyo. Of course, you have to pay to get in and whatnot. Since it is kind of like Legoland, which you do have to pay to get into. <laughs> I don't really know what this is about. But there's apparently some kind of performer here. Ah. Seems to be a street well, that's pretty interesting. So you can do a little bit of dining, a little bit of eating here. And of course, then that's the mall you can do some shopping. Oh, I came to show you is right inside here. Yeah. 
This is a theme park, an indoor theme park, sponsored and created by Sega, and it has a lot of interesting things in there. Although it is nothing you have to get into, and why would this be the panel? I'm not quite sure about what the privacy policy is. So even if I went in, I may not be able to take video. is a lot. There are little guidebooks here. And, uh, get a little bit of the concept that they have. They have a lot of, kind, they actually do have a lot of rides to them. All within the space of, well, three floors. They've all got explorations and what up. And they have Sonic, the Sonic Carnival. Which is kind of like, well it is a Sonic Carnival. Basically it, it's a Sonic playing area where you play, play carnival games to get prizes. Like, well, stuff like inflatable swords and plushies and stuff. And you also play a lot, and you also play some video games here too. And of note, our those has these kind of things, which are kind of reality warping panels where you stand in front of the camera and basically it creates stuff like doppelgangers here. And you see Ed Pan's One Piece Film Z. So we're soon approaching the 30 minute mark. So I'll show off the last couple of things. So the first of the two things is the Blair, which is the Rainbow Bridge. A well-known bridge in Japan. At night it does light up in rainbow colors. It actually is nice and impressive, and could be equivalent to something like the Brooklyn Bridge, or the Golden Gate Bridge. And for the last thing, we have to go back over here to where I started. As in here, that street performer or performer of some kind is quite a talkative fellow. But going over here to the Aqua Sea area where we started out, we can get to the thing. Well, the last thing to show here. And it's already technically in my camera frame, but it's not something that I'm close enough to make out yet unless I zoom in, but I'm going to get to it to show it to you. Getting closer. So getting closer.
And again, once I put this up, I do plan to put timestamps for the different things that I show off. So we'll come over here, we can finally take a look. And it would be right over there. That is a scaled down replica of the Statue of Liberty overlooking the Rainbow Bridge. And see, it is a very accurate representation, but very much scaled down to just being somewhat bigger than the average person. It certainly is an unexpected thing to see here in Odaiba. And I didn't actually look up why it's here, but it certainly is an interesting thing.